the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I really appreciate this opportunity. I am grateful, Pastor. Thank you, and your dear wife, and all the people. It was an awesome time, truly. Um, like, like Pastor shared, truly, um, I believe that it will be a teaching session this, this morning. And um, my goal is to strengthen the workers, and of course, everybody by extension. But there are certain truths that we need to know that will strengthen us. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we pray in one minute and say, Lord, speak to me, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without. Help me. Let me walk upon the water. Lift your voice and pray. the living God we pray that you help us grant us understanding in the name of Jesus by these truths we pray that you will shift us to higher levels in the name of Jesus amen and amen God bless you again please be seated thank you thank you very much um, Luke chapter 1 Verse, verse 2 makes a very 2 and 3 makes a very powerful statement it says this is Dr. Luke writing to Theophilus even as they delivered them to us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word it says it seemed good to me also having perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write thee in order most excellent Theophilus and then the, the emphasis is really verse 1 4 says to know the certainty of those things but then the point is verse 1 for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed not the things that are believed the things that are most surely believed that means these are foundational convictions the things that are most surely believed you cannot afford to doubt these ones you may doubt and question other things but in every ministry and in every Christian organization there must be things that are most surely believed. Praise the Lord. When you get to Benihin ministry, for instance, here and there you may have variations of belief, but every staff there will tell you they believe in the healing power of Jesus. They are the truths that are most surely believed. 
when you get to Canaan land, you may share about several things and people may disagree here and there. But when it comes to the subject of faith and the supernatural, the word of faith and the power of the word in provoking possibilities, there are truths that are most surely believed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I'm going to be sharing a number of things that I trust would bless us. Uh, but to start, let's just look at three scriptures very quickly. We're dealing with the workforce generally in the house of God. So Psalm 62, Psalm 92. Psalm 92, we'll start from verse 12 to 15, popular scripture. Psalm 92, if we have it projected, and if you can see it, we'll read together. One to read. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, uh -huh, and shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Praise the Lord. So it says, they that be planted in the house of God not they that come to the house of God. Not they that visit. They that be planted. He says there is a destiny for them. They will flourish in the courts of our God. That even in old age, provided they are still planted, they will be fat and flourishing. Scripture number two. Psalm 68 and verse 11. Psalm 68. Now, this is very powerful. Let's read it together, please. Ready? Read, please. The Lord gave the word. Uh -huh. Great was the company of those that published it. One more time, please. This, we're going to walk this scripture. But the Bible says the Lord gave the word. But the spreading of that word depended on a great company not just the quality of the word it was the lord that gave the word so we are we are sure of the potency of the word but the bible says great was the company that means without that company that word will not prevail the lord gave the word the lord gave the ministry the lord gave the vision the lord gave the assignment but the bible says great was the company that published it to publish a thing means to make it unforgettable it doesn't just mean to spread it around it means to insist that it remains in the mind of people when you publish a book it outlives even the writer the lord gave the word but great is the company of them that published it one more scripture first corinthians chapter 4 paul is teaching the church in corinth first corinthians 4 the first two verses let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God let's read verse 2 together ready read please moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful hallelujah now the, the way that the purposes of God please look up the way that the purposes of God is um, advances within a territory is that God himself, being the visionaire, being the custodian of his program, he will usually find a man and commit a dimension of his vision. His ultimate blueprint is to see the reality of his life, his power, his glory cover the earth. The Bible says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, it says that it should cover the earth like waters the sea. Are we together now? And so the real agenda of God is summed up in one phrase or clause. It says, Thy kingdom come. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was teaching them how to pray. And he says, When you pray, pray in this manner. It's this and that and that and then it says thy kingdom come what is the kingdom of god the culture the influence the life god's ultimate desire is not just that men be saved 
That is his priority, but not his only desire. Are we together now? John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Then he says, I am come, that ye may have life, and that you have that life more abundantly. Are we together? Yes. The Bible says that they who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will not only go to heaven, that they will reign in this life. Are we still together? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 that we have been made unto our God. Not we will be made right now. We have been made unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign and the jurisdiction of our dominion is earth. Hallelujah. Yes. So God has his universal program. You have to understand this to be an effective worker. The universal program of God is not just the Great Commission. The universal program of God is not just that which was committed to household of David. Are we together now? There is the universal blueprint. There's something that God is doing. First, the salvation of sinners, but not the only one. The ultimate agenda is that the reality of his life, his power, his grace, all that makes God, God, that it is reproduced within this dimension of his domain. But the agenda is twofold. Number one is that Christ would find expression in the hearts of men. That's what you call new birth. The second agenda is that the program of God be institutionalized across every strata of human experience. That's called influence. So evangelism and influence, therefore, are the two major tools for kingdom advance. If we stop at evangelism, people will be saved, but the city will not be safe. S-A-F-E. It's not only important that men are saved, we must also ensure that Jerusalem is peaceful. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. Are we together? So it is God's desire that his, the lordship of the Christ be established first in the hearts of men. Then across every strata of human activities. Now, in doing that, he breaks his agenda into different roles. Please understand this. He breaks his agenda into different dimensions and roles. We call that ministry. He now commits it to individuals. So what you call your assignment, whether individually or corporately, is simply your contribution to that universal blueprint. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If you say, I was called to do this, this is my purpose, this is my assignment, you are only attempting to find your role or your place in that universal plan. And this is important because it then means, like a relay, someone is waiting for your efficiency so that he will also be useful in that plan. When you watch people run a relay, are we still together? Someone is waiting to receive the baton. Is that true? And because of another person's carelessness, someone who has the potential to win can, can miss out on the opportunity to take the prize. Why? Because the person who would pass the baton was not efficient enough. It means that my refusing to understand my role in this blueprint will cost somebody his salvation. Somebody can literally go to hell because I was careless about my role. Someone can miss out on an opportunity to live a fruitful and a meaningful life. If you do not understand this, being a worker in church will just be a religious activity. You have to look at the broad picture. Beyond the church, beyond the man, we have to look at the agenda. The name of the agenda is thy kingdom come. Not church planting. Not evangelism, not crusades, not conferences. No. If your scope starts from there, you will be tired one day. It must be broad enough. There is an energy that must sponsor your efficiency as a worker. And the energy must be beyond the current assignment you are doing. You must, you must be broad enough. So even when you are tired, you just remember, someone's salvation is depending on my obedience. Are we blessed? There are two ways to motivate people generally in leadership. Number one is by influence. The other is by force and cruelty. 
unfortunately for many people they have adopted the second formula and so all kinds of theological um messages have come in an attempt to threaten people to be loyal to a vision it's a very incorrect way of leadership influence is the ability to make people buy into your ideology without using force are we together so you understand the agenda now so if for instance please come ma thank you this lovely woman of god sings beautifully Every time I come here, I look forward to her singing before I come up and pastor seems to, you know. Now, watch this. Now, you would think, let's assume she doesn't do any other thing with her life. And she's just singing. If this dear woman of God does not understand the role that her song is playing, her song, her assignment is to make the atmosphere conducive for the power of God to flow. So that while that man is teaching... Are we together now? He's influencing your mind. Who will influence your child back at home? Who will influence another CEO who is responsible for 5,000 staff? You see, it's very difficult to take over a territory if we do not understand that our roles are more serious than we think it is. So she lifts her voice. Do you know when a CEO is pacified, that's good for the company? Because... The Spirit of God can now speak to him, raise their salary, just because one person fulfilled her assignment well. That man can come and leave the church angry and all his workers will pay for it. And if your husband is part of those workers, what do you think will happen to that family? Just because somebody didn't rehearse well and someone's mood is interrupted. When, when Saul, a spirit came upon Saul, was it not David? that they brought he did not preach he didn't prophesy he sang out that spirit that means that it's not when the man of god comes to preach i'm just giving you an example that right here if this woman of god understands that my role as i stand to minister i'm not singing a song you are familiar with so you follow me it is an assignment i am there is an active role that without it no matter how powerful the message comes it will change her perception so she may be tired she may be weak she may feel like sleeping but she remembers that no pastor and the member somebody who just came to church today is depending on the power and the revelation so while she's rehearsing angels are watching they are watching how how effective she intends to be are we together yes sir thank you ma It is very important that we understand that what we call our assignment, whether as an individual, whether as a great house like household of David, is simply our contribution. So God calls a man called Pastor Shola and his dear wife and God apportions a dimension. Are we together now? Now, if pastor did not answer that assignment and his dear wife, there will not be this platform this way. And some of the things we receive cheaply now that we may trivialize, routing it would have been so hard. Are we together now? Yes. Now, imagine with me for one moment. We are not talking of being workers in church now. Imagine who has been suffering because you refuse to tell God yes. Imagine who was supposed to have heard the word of God from your lips in 2015 but simply because you refuse to be serious with God imagine the marriage that should not break if you obeyed God and were serious about your assignment imagine a young boy today who would have been a beneficiary of your scholarship if you had intent if you had known that this thing is not just about money when god told you read that book on prosperity say lord i'm comfortable like this and he said no when i say read that book is because in your knowledge is the school fees of five thousand people so i'm saying read for their sake not just for yourself you have a house already Are we blessed? So God has a bigger agenda than a church. A bigger agenda than a workforce. So broadly speaking, what you call your assignment is your contribution to that universal agenda. God has given me an assignment. And I am honored every time I have the privilege to 
you know, go around doing the things that God has called me to do. I am honored when I see the effect of my obedience on people and a generation. I am blessed all the time. Apostle, I just listened to your message. Look what it has done. And I say, thank you, Jesus, for telling you yes. And I still say yes again. I'm tired, but I still say yes. I know that I've not slept well, but the answer is still yes. There is an energy that must be beyond salary. There is an energy that must be beyond money. Listen to me. There is an energy that must be beyond general appreciation. There is an energy that cannot be human if you plan to last in your assignment. There is no amount of money that can give you the fuel that you need to fulfill destiny. There is no amount of applause from men. It can help. It can encourage. But you must be motivated from a standpoint that is higher than money, higher than fame, higher than achievement, higher than arrival. Otherwise, you may start. But there is a guarantee you will not finish. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, comma, and despised the shame. Are you blessed already? Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's deal with a few things. Every time, please look up. The way that the maturing of the saints. Now let's come back to the church. The way that God designed the maturity and the growth of the saints. Is that every believer is allocated not just a destiny not just an assignment but we are apportioned by god's predeterminate counsel to spiritual houses that are akin to spiritual tribes are we together now it is the place of planting it is the place of building in god's economy you don't get born again and remain like that isolation is a recipe for destruction and so the key to sustaining kingdom values is to create a community of like-minded people so that you will now have the opportunity to grow you will now have the opportunity to believe when you find many people believing the same thing it strengthens your own conviction because when you get born again your convictions are fragile you are fighting two realms of beliefs are we together now you are coming from a system that may be cultural you are coming from a past that may be destructive now you are adopting a new ideology and so that that new ideology does not embarrass you you will need a body of believers i give you an instance praying in the spirit you come from a background where you were part of those who laughed at believers now you are born again you will need people just like you if you are the only one praying alone i guarantee you, you will stop because a day will come, your flesh will catch up with you and you will think you are foolish. What is this gibberish I keep speaking? But when you find other people more matured, more determined, then it strengthens you. Are we together? Yes, sir. A community life is the secret to sustaining kingdom values. It's a mystery that builds fortification against the attack of the devil. He will come to you. Satan does not give up on people easily. Just because you've now been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. A, a system of safety was provided. Not just the blood of Jesus. Not just the name of God. That system called not just the church. That local assembly is a system of safety. And it's a real family. Because for some of us we do not truly have any other family outside of our spiritual family some of us come from traditional settings some of us sadly have lost our loved ones some of us may be the only ones historically speaking that have come to pledge our allegiance to jesus so you will need the comfort and the succor of a spiritual family a spiritual family is a real family always it's not just a family for born again people there are people who went to school today simply because they came to church. There are people today who got married because they came to church. Is that true? There are people today who had the inspiration to start a business because they came to church. There are people today, many pastors can tell you that I saw this man when he came. I was the first to give him a visitor's card. Today, he is a pastor in the ministry. Look what God has done. 
So it matters that believers identify with a body and a community of like-minded believers. And to do that, God, God, God is a very, very intelligent God. He, he, he did it in such a way that on one hand, the dimension of him committed to that man is being advanced through him and the people. And then on the other hand, they are having an opportunity for growth and development. Are we together now? So the assignment committed to that man is being fulfilled and then the believers now continue to mature. A city and a territory that does not have local assemblies and platforms to build and mature believers will eventually reflect itself in a depraved society. There will be no corporate force that fights evil. And then because of the days that we live in, believers must live intelligently. Otherwise another Pharaoh will arise. And then thwart the purposes of God because that force is not formidable enough. Are we blessed this morning? So believers, according to God's design and as patterned by the early church, when believers got born again, they were allocated certain people to oversee them, to help, to build them, to mature them. In fact, Paul said it this way. Sorry, I'm rushing because there are still some other things for us to deal with. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. That means I not only watch over your souls, my assignment is to see that the formation of Christ becomes an experience in your life. Jesus himself was speaking in John 17 and he said, all that you have given me, not all that I got. That means everyone who finds his way into the household of David, it looks like they were called by invitation. But the truth is that your destiny, ah, this life, eh? do you know if God helps you to find where the grace allocated for your growth is? You can be in a good church an anointed church, a sincere church, but it does not capture the experience that was made for your building. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And you can be in that church, everything is right, but everything is wrong with you. The only thing is just general knowledge about God, but as far as your destiny is concerned, it's like that connection is not there. Are we blessed? Okay, let's deal with some other issues. If I don't, if I don't stop myself, we will not even talk about workforce. <laughs> because I've not even started. See, this is the... We're trying to deal with so many things. I'm telling you, this thing is supposed to take days to deal with. Because the first plan A is to understand God's system. First. Just saying I'm an usher will not profit you. You will be tired and you will be angry from day one until you are sponsored by another understanding. You see that is the reason why we gas out and we're very tired in church. We serve especially as you'll be learning if and when you have to serve in a department that is not charismatic. In a department that does not allow, it doesn't give allowance for you um, to shine in as much as you know shining to be. You understand what I mean? Yes. If you are not sponsored by this revelation, you will revolt eventually. There's no camera snapping me in the kitchen while I cook for the man of God. There's nobody here watching while I sweep the church. When they come, it's swept. But these wonderful people, you can see them. If his husband, you can see. If his wife, you can see. Are we together now? Oh boy. I'm already... But now you are there in the kitchen. Or you are there in pastor's office. But as you will be learning later, everything that is of value is hidden. So the more God hides you, that means there is something about you. You have never seen your heart. Yet it is there. Let that heart go wrong. And you will see that every other thing you can see will tell you the value of the hearts that you have. Isn't it amazing?
Write this down. The first assignment and the first responsibility of every worker is not service. <laughs> the first assignment and the first responsibility of every worker in the house of God is not service but spiritual growth. The first assignment of every worker in household of David, in any church, in any Christian organization is not service. Is growth. Spiritual growth. Are you seeing that now? Uh, do you know why I'm telling you this? This herein lies, of course you know that I'm not just speaking to household of David. But herein lies, pastor, the mystery behind many people being skilled and working in a church. But you never see the trace of the impact of the vision on them. They are skilled. They are powerful. But because the first assignment to them is service. They become efficient in service and stop there. Mighty revival happening. People are repenting. People are growing. But the guys are just doing what they are doing. And there is no evidence of growth. One day, you look at the person after five years and the grace, the signature grace that follows that ministry is not on them. When they looked at Peter, Peter wanted to lie that he didn't know Jesus. But it was already too late. There was something that had come upon him that even at the point of betrayal, they said, no, your, your accent, you, you have, your words have been too cultured. You, you cannot tell us that you don't know Jesus. No, you are speaking like him. Hallelujah. Is it not really embarrassing sometimes when, respectfully speaking, we meet certain workers and we tell them, are you a Christian? Oh yes, I'm a Christian. What church? Ah, I'm in this church. How many years? Five years. And then you start doubting. You attended that impartation service? Yes, sir. You attended the night vigil? Yes, sir. You know this pastor? Here's my picture with him. So what happened? What happened? I see your service, but I do not see your growth. Remember, remember, that more than service, God wants your heart. Please understand this. So the first assignment and responsibility of every worker is not service. It's spiritual growth. Your service, therefore, will always be a reflection of your knowledge of God. Your growth. The more you grow, the more you increase, the more you improve in your knowledge of God, it will translate to the efficiency of your service. If you are not growing spiritually, eventually it will find a way of reflecting in the quality of your service. Your spiritual growth will kill the potential for offense. Your spiritual growth will, will continue to allow the Spirit of God plant humility in you. So that even if you are not apportioned leadership, you will still be satisfied to serve His Majesty because you are sponsored by a knowledge that is higher than just administration. Spiritual growth is important. When people do not grow, there will always be trouble, multiplied trouble in that Christian organization, in that church, and so on and so forth. So please know this, dear people of God, that your first assignment is not service. Your first assignment is growth. I don't have the time to talk about growth, but let me just give us four indices very quickly if you do not mind. I hope you are getting blessed this morning. Four indices that the Bible puts in place to measure spiritual growth. There are four biblical indices. If you claim you are growing spiritually, then we must check your life and benchmark it against these indices. And when we find out that something is wrong there, then we, we know that you are not growing. Number one, the first measure of spiritual growth is your love life. Your love life. First John chapter 4. It's a long reading. We will not read it. Just write it down. 7 to 21. First John chapter 4 from verse 7 to 21. Your love life. Let's just read verse 7. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. 
When I talk of many people love God and hate men, you are not a very good Christian. Hello? If you love God alone and hate men, because men were created in His image, you cannot love the person you are seeing and hate the one on the mirror. Are we together now? It says, let us love one another for love is of God and anyone that loveth is born of God. There is no such thing like we don't have love in our family. It's a demonic statement. The, the love of God does not come from, from foundations. The love of God comes from the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Share that broad in our hearts. Hallelujah. Everybody say my love life. There are people who because of their backgrounds, they are angry people. And they like it. They claim they are angry people by default. We are like that in our family. You don't know when we are happy and when we are angry. Change. This is where the excellency of the gospel is its ability to transform you. You cannot say we are like that. We were all sinners. But now are we sinners? No. We've been saved. So if that kind of translation is possible, it means any other translation is possible. I don't just preach. I love the people I preach to. Sincerely from my heart. It's one of the secrets to the power of God upon my life. It's not just fasting. It's not just praying. I genuinely, sincerely love the people I minister to. I never come and climb on stage and then hold the mic, preach just to let the people get impressed by what I'm saying. It's from the depth of my heart. When I'm speaking, whether I'm rebuking, correcting, loving, whatever it is that I'm doing, you know sincerely from my heart. Love is discernible. Love is discernible. If the only way you discern love is through a gift, you are carnal. Love is discernible spiritually. You don't have to be given a physical gift wrapped and say, take and say, wow, you love me that much. No. Information is proof of love. When you give correct information, you don't have to give physical things alone. Love. Your love life. Are we blessed? Number two, the second index to measure spiritual growth is character and godliness. Character and godliness. Galatians chapter 5, please. 22 and 23. Just write it down. Remember this morning is discipleship. Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. And then Romans chapter 5, please. From verse 3 and 5. I'm so sorry. Um... Character. Please look at me. Character is very important. Character is a believer's culture. The way you behave. The kingdom has a set of values. And listen to me. Satan destroys men by attacking their values, not them. You are destroyed when your values are destroyed. There are traits that characterize believers. Are we together? And in as much as we continue to press experientially towards perfection, you must never give your weakness a chance. Being, knowing that I have anger, or I have lust, or I have whatever, is not an endorsement to say, well, I have it and at least I'm happy that I'm aware. No. Being aware is not enough. You must continue to take advantage of all the arsenals provided for the believers to fight that fight of faith until there is victory. Okay, I came from a background and I, I have boiling anger. When I'm angry, even pastor, I will shout at him. I will say sorry later, but for that point, I will, um, you cannot be laughing and say, okay, I'm like that. Or as you see me laugh like this, it's the same way when I get angry. I'm not, it's not a testimony. So you go back in the name of Jesus. I came from this background, but the Bible says I've been called out of every tribe. I'm showing you how you wore it. Every tongue. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the Spirit of God. I have self-control. I reject anger. And then you read books from people who have gone through what you want to go through. And they will teach you things like when you are angry, keep quiet. You see that? When you talk in anger, you usually will talk in the flesh. Anger always seeks expression. And keeping quiet is one of the fastest ways to deceive, to defeat anger. 
Notice that every time when you are angry, you want to. If your mouth will not move, your hands, you, there is just, there is the obsession to act. Suddenly the Spirit of God, in honor of your desire, comes to break that thing in you. And someone can look at you and say, but I've, I've, you know, we are five workers in this department, but it's as if we are four, because I don't know what kind of brain you have. And the you of before would have said, okay, just because I came to Lagos and I joined a church, you don't know who I am, but I will tell you who I was before God saved me. But while Cain wants to act, Abel, the spirit, you don't sow to the flesh. You can watch and people say, ah, you mean you allow this guy to keep insulting you like this? And no, no, it's all right. Um, he may be going through something that he's just managing it wrongly. You are, you are showing the superiority of your transformation. It's not weakness. Every time you feel cheated, the devil is angry. And he wants you to react. Listen to me. I share with you powerful principles. Every time you feel cheated and there's an obsession to retaliate, you are about to miss something that is already a trophy for you. Because weakness is what kills strength on the cross. When people come to the point of weakness, you who is strong, be afraid. Esther used weakness to kill her man. Esther used weakness to dethrone Vashti. Jesus used weakness. Are you the son of man? He keeps quiet. When you have what to say and still keep quiet, you are really strong. Is God blessing us this morning? Character. Character. Your words. You don't speak and just insult everybody and say, well, I'm growing. No, you have to discipline yourself. The discipline of conformity, we call it. Let this mind, you know, correct living truly comes from superior thinking until your, your mentality. I told you, I've shared it again here in this church uh, during the Mercy Conference, that our bodies are only executors of our mindsets. If something about your belief system is very, you have a very fragile sense of self-worth, you will always feel the need to express yourself and correct perceptions. So the key is not just to talk right. The key is an upgrade in your understanding. Because when that happens, you will find out that many things you say should not have been said. Every critic, almost every critic already knows the truth. So trying to tell them the truth is a waste of time. The point was not to show that you are lying. The point was to manage the frustration for being failures. When critics criticize you most of the time, they know the truth already. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, let me just tell you the truth. Let me tell you what you are discussing. We know. Not I know. We know that you are a man. So when we ask you all those nonsense questions in the day, don't mind us. We know that you are a man sent from God. For no man can do these things. Some of you will leave church today wiser. As you go back home and see people saying, Christians, where did you even say you came from? The I... You don't say, I came from church. You are not, you, there's no need to have answered that question. Because the person, your godliness is judging their spiritual unseriousness. And they have to find a way of watering down your self-worth. You just got promotion. Ha. In this Nigeria, only God knows what we do in the secret. So, you see, those kinds of statements, and you say, look, let me tell you. By God's grace, I don't sleep, it's unnecessary. You don't have to waste your time saying that. A critic knows the truth. You don't need to repeat what is already known. Your silence shows the superiority of your understanding. Character. Are we blessed this morning service? Number three. The third index for measuring your spiritual growth is your level of spiritual understanding. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. That we be filled with the knowledge of His will... That we be filled with all wisdom and that we be filled with spiritual understanding. The level of your spiritual understanding. Let me give you three scriptures quickly. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13. Hebrews. And then 
Let's read this one. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 20. Very powerful. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 20. Let's read together. Ready? One to read, please. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Uh huh. How be it? In malice. Uh huh. Hold on. Don't, don't rush it. That's something very serious there. He's saying there are some things you should be like a child in. Sometimes you look at a child and say you are stupid and the child does not even understand English enough to know what you are saying. So he's playing and just doing. He's saying when it has to do with those things, malice, he says be children, but in understanding be matured or men. Your depth of comprehending the ways of God, the Bible says you must mature. You start, but you don't remain there. It's important that we grow in our spiritual understanding that means for instance any um please come my friend if this man has been here at household of david for five years i don't expect if i come as a believer who just got born again this guy should be able to show me a pathway for or towards growth he doesn't have to be a pastor it's proof that he has grown he doesn't have to be the bible study secretary i should be able to meet him and say sir I was a drunkard last week. I just got born again. What next? Said, well, am I the pastor? Do you think that uh, as you see me like, did you see a collar on my neck? That's not the issue. How did you grow yourself? If you are really growing, it should not be difficult to direct people. Most times we are unable to answer that question because we are not growing ourselves. Or we are not growing intentionally. Are we blessed? How many of you here can, well, is it a good question to ask, can cook? The men too, you mean it? I'm impressed. I mean, what I cannot do, if I see you doing it, I honor you seriously for it. I mean, like you can cook, or even for the governor of this state. Ah, you see now? Now, watch this. If you are that good, is it true? That you should be afraid if I ask you to teach me. Are you saying now? You are that good. Good enough to teach, to cook for the governor. That's a level of mastery that should not allow for guessing. The yam cannot boil well today and not boil tomorrow. That level of error you should have passed it. Are we together? Now, watch this. This is the same way if you have been in the church, in the house of God for a while, you should have heard because every pastor will emphasize the area that represents his core grace. You would have heard different messages come along that area to have strengthened you. It will be an embarrassment when you are part of a ministry and the core revelations that represent the foundation of that ministry is not yet your conviction. You should be able to articulate it with intelligence. Are we blessed? Praise the Lord. It's like going to Pastor Sama Day means church for instance and calling someone and say, please, what is value? And he said, ah, uh, I've just been in work. I've really not had the opportunity to listen. I've, I've been, I've, I'm always at the parking lot, honestly. It's not like it's my fault. God knows that I'm serving Him with it. It's an embarrassment. Now, if you go to maybe just, just any church around and you ask for value and some, you can excuse them. It depends on what God called the man of God to do. Are we together now? But for that kind of thing, it's like meeting someone in Reinhard Bonke's team and saying, what is salvation? And he says, well, I know it's synonymous with deliverance. That's, that's how far I know. It's an embarrassment within the context of that church or that institution the things that are most surely believed are we together and so you ask this man and tell him okay i need to grow there are some things i expect this brother to know how do we prosper in the kingdom this is a prosperous church i don't expect you to score zero over ten for that question it's an embarrassment first to god then to the grace and the leadership of your pastor you should be able to tell me there are principles, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Understanding. I'm passionate about understanding. It is very important. In, corporate, in the corporate world, 
um, one of the principles that they teach the people is the core value of the company. They, they capture it in creeds, they capture it in their training, they wear it as vests. The goal is to make sure that it becomes embedded in their minds. Is that true? So that you ask them, who are you? What do you stand for? What do you represent? And with, 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 with the, the mastery of an artist, they will articulate it. This is what we are here for. What are your core values? We're here for efficiency, we're here for service, we're here for product delivery, etc. And they state those things. It is the same principle that must be in the church. I should be able to ask any worker here, what do you stand for? What I mean is, what is your role as given to your pastor and as revealed to you? The Bible says, write the vision, then the next assignment is make it Explain. Explain it. Open the dimensions of the vision so that it is fully understood. And the benefit of making it plain is that he will run who reads it. Whoever understands it will run. Whoever does not understand it will be slothful. Hallelujah. And then of course the last index for measuring spiritual growth is the outworkings of the power of God in your life. If you have been in this church for a while, you should have seen that this church gives a, a, a great allowance for the operation of the Spirit. And so, there are certain dimensions of the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we expect to be at work and to be strong in your life. Are we blessed? Let's get back to what we are discussing. That the first assignment of every worker is not service, but spiritual growth. Say in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to take my spiritual growth seriously. You have to grow. You have to grow. Most of the things that destroy the workforce in any church come as a result of the, the presence of the flesh. The flesh. The lusts. The, the need for vain glory, the need, all of these things are things that will be remedied. Did you know that, um, honestly speaking, even at the organizational level, most, most ministries and Christian platforms that don't pray and don't grow can spend five hours for something that should be agreed upon in 15 minutes. Why? Because everyone is manifesting the depth of the flesh that is at work. They say, I don't agree with this one. Say, but the Holy Spirit is saying this now. I mean, you are saying, and I, for some reason, I don't agree. It will take two weeks before you now fast and pray and catch up and say, ah, it's really God. Though. By that time, you've wasted the time of people. So when people grow spiritually, the Bible says, Acts chapter 2 verse 1, it says, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered, not in one place, in one accord. Everybody say one accord. The Holy Ghost could come upon them corporately because they were in one accord. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's talk about efficiency in the house of God. Let me just talk about that and then we'll find somewhere to pray. Let's pray in the spirit for one minute. I think it's good when, when we talk like this, we'll just have some time to pray. We do these things because we love Him. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father who is seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. One more time. Hallelujah. Please write this down. 
To be an effective worker in the house of God, the following should be present in your life. Number one, conviction. Please write it down. The first key to efficiency in service. Now we're talking of service. Conviction. What does this mean? You must believe both the message and the messenger. Every vision, every church, every Christian platform has the message. Not messages, not series, not sermons. The message. The Bible says this is the message that we have received from the beginning. The message represents the core belief, the core assignment. Are we together now? You must believe the message and the messenger. Let me show you a scripture that will bless you. John chapter 6, please. Let's start from verse 55. Jesus is teaching here. John chapter 6. God is making someone an effective worker in this house. In the name of Jesus. Now look at this. Jesus is in the middle of a very serious teaching here. For my flesh is meat indeed. Controversial teaching. And my blood is drink indeed. Uh huh. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Read on please. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Would you run away when a pastor is talking like this? Now imagine for God's sake, you eat my flesh, you drink my blood, I came from a far... <laughs> you just say, let me just go out of this place. So it's like these people are... It's an occultic organization. 58. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Another confusion. From flesh he has gone to bread. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Sometimes you need to pity those who were with Jesus. Don't attack them unnecessarily. Or the teaching is, you have seen the other side of the teaching. When they were in the lecture room with Jesus, he had not died. So there were certain things they didn't understand. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Right? Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Read on please. It says, this thing said he in the synagogue. As he taught in Capernaum. Uh -huh. Many therefore. Look at this. Many therefore of his what? Please talk to me. When they had heard this said. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Not newcomers. Not visitors. Disciples. They had been with him. 61. When Jesus knew himself. That his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, Doth this offend you? Does my assignment offend you? Does the message that represents liberation over sin, does it offend you? And when Jesus knew himself, okay, 61, 62, What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? He says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. 64. But there are some of you that what? Believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believe not. And, should, and who should betray him. That means the ones that betray are the ones that believe not. The ones that will always be used are the ones that truly do not the ones that are not there they can be there but they believe not 65 and he said therefore said i unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father from that time many of his disciples did what went back and walked no more with him then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? When we get to 69, we can stop there. 68. Then Simon Peter, may someone here be like him. I know we insult Simon Peter and say he ran away from Jesus just for three days. He tried. 
with this kind of teaching and you ran away for only three days. You came back on the third day repenting. That's a faithful worker. Let's continue. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe, hallelujah, and are sure that you are Christ. Pastor Shola, I believe that you are a man of God, sent from heaven, sent as my pastor. Listen, just because you are in church does not mean you believe the man of God and the message. Two things you must believe. If you do not believe it, something will happen. Have you seen now, respectfully speaking, I, I think this is a challenge that almost every Christian organization would have. It is terrible to be in a place and not agree. It's better to go away. Are, are we together now? This is not something unique to this church. It's, it's everywhere. Every time Jesus met people with conviction, he had regard for them, even though they were wrong. You should neither be here nor there. You are in a church, and then they say, let's fast for three days. And you say, this thing, eh? there was something I read the other day. I have a problem with this fast. I will just do it just because they said we should do it, but in my heart, kind. You see, because you do not believe the man of God, and because you do not believe the message, you may not receive. The most effective people in redeem today, for instance, are the people who believe the man of God and believe the message. The most effective people in deeper life today are the people who believe the man of God and believe the message. I call the names for a reason. The most effective people say in mountain of fire today are people who believe the man of God and the message. It is dangerous to be in a place and then function in the place and you don't believe. Lift your hands and receive the blessing and the people just look. Say, well... <laughs> I don't believe this man is anointed, but let me just leave my hand. You will never receive anything. You, you, you see it now? Yes. Notice that every time people receive Jesus as touching his office, thou son of David, not Jesus, thou son of David, I know you more than just the 33 year old body. There are many people in many churches who are the first to go back talk about their pastors. Now, I'm not it doesn't matter whether you are right or wrong. That's not the issue. That every time something begins to happen to that honor factor, the the lack of perception, the sons of the prophet were offended already. And I believe when you study the context of scripture, they were justifiably so because Elijah was a temperous man. And so you can imagine that all of that would destroy him. But Elisha said, no way. If you like, back at me, shout at me. I know what I'm looking for. He sought after him diligently. I tell you why many people do not receive the graces upon their pastors. Because they are just there. Some are there because they are paid staff of a, an organization that happens to run on Christian values. Is God helping us? I am a person of very strong convictions. Even if I'm wrong, I want to know that I am I'm standing somewhere. And I'm not ashamed to change and switch. Transformation and transition is something that God allows. But to be neither here nor there, mm -mm. it's important to stand for something. Are we together now? Yes. Do you believe in this dear man of God? This discussion this morning is very serious. We're going to pray. Do you believe that he's not just Pastor Shola who you just saw and um, decided to come? I just like the man. He's a great teacher. I just like the woman of God. She's a one. No, 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 no. No, we know man after the flesh. Can you discern? Pastor, isn't it amazing that sometimes people in our own assemblies go through troubles that our grace can solve in a moment, but they have refused to discern that grace? I think he was one of the great fathers of faith in this nation that um, made a statement and said his brother and his friend had some serious financial challenges and they came and met him and um, 
the friend was saying, sir, I know you are a servant of God. I've seen God use you to open doors for people. Please pray for me. And the brother came, you know, met him and said, look, bros, you have to help me. I'm in a serious financial situation. He was not asking for prayer. He said, I know you have money. We know ourselves. Just bring this thing and help me. Let me solve this problem. Same problem. For one person, he will receive money and he will return back again. For another person, he will receive the grace that will cause men and ideas to draw forth resources to him. It is very, very powerful. Let me tell you this, and I submit to you in the name of the Lord. I love your pastor with all my heart, but I will tell you, there is one thing your pastor and his wife have done. We've known ourselves for some years, and I can tell you this, I stand by the integrity of God's word. Your pastor and the wife we can laugh we can play but they continue to keep this awareness of that honor of the grace of god upon my life all the time without fail and this i appreciate and i celebrate you truly for it it's true it's true it's true is jesus a carpenter to you or a savior is your pastor an elder brother or just a man of god or a man sent from god to bless you everybody say conviction yes as this woman of god can i use you again ma please come as this woman of god stands to sing do you just see her as Someone who just has a good voice in household of David. Oh, you are singless. Or do you see her as one who is anointed of God? That as she stands to sing, you are saying, Lord, this is a vessel. Listen, I share this with you sincerely because this is how I've trained my workers. Do you know, let me tell you this. These are my dear people. I don't even know where they are now. Now, watch this. Did you know that these guys have worked with me for many years? I have different sets, but many times they themselves look for times when everybody has gone so that i can now sit down and teach them you would think that because they work with me every day they have no in all fairness usually when we sit down to eat is their best moment because they can now fish me out of the room and now when we sit down there is the opportunity to ask questions and i always use that hunger check because where there is hunger there is honor usually when you are filled you can push the food and it falls Hunger and honor usually goes hand in hand. Hallelujah. I have benefited from the grace that is upon your pastor. Profound grace. Have you? You are workers. Do you now see why visitors are the ones who receive more in many churches? They come for meetings. I'm so glad and blessed for this meeting this morning. Because in a few hours now... This place will be full of people who are coming. Oh, um, the man of God is coming and several people. And it is painful. Any man who loves God wants his people blessed. I thank God for what I continue to do. Did you know that many times if I miss my meeting there, my people call me and say, these Lagos people again, these Eastern people again, these ones again, I say, ah, um, the plane is just lifting. You, know, you people may not see me for a while. When you heard me, I hope you listened to everything I told you. You just download all of the messages. Did you know that I go on YouTube myself to download my teachings? I don't ask the people, just come and give me is my teachings. When I listen to it, I don't listen to the teachings of Joshua Selman. I listen to the teachings of an anointed man of God. I tell you this. There are times that I'm listening to that teaching and the man of God is about to pray. And I'm in my room, I go down my knees, receiving. That's how to partake of my own grace. I must honor the grace too. Glory to the Father, you are seated at the door. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Yes, sir. These are not things you will hear me say everywhere. Believe me when I tell you this. Yes, sir. I go back and I listen. There is no day I don't listen to my teachings. No day. So when you say, Apostle, I have 300 of your messages. Me too, I have it. 
Yes, sir. I listen to it, and sometimes when I'm listening to it, I just nod my head. This man, my God. I'm doing exactly what you are doing too. And impartations upon impartations, graces come, and I come out with fresh fire. See, let me tell you, what you dishonor will never work for you, even if it's on you. If the grace is so close to be on you, If this woman is lifting a song, do you believe that she's standing as a mistress, ministering life? If you don't believe it, she will sing something that can drive out pain from your body and that pain will remain there. When you understand this, every worker in this house will honor one another because you are you are a compendium of graces in disguise when you hug one another you don't know what you hug my yesterday's version is not today's version you don't know what entered me yesterday i hugged you last week but you don't know who prayed for me between last week and this week you don't know what anointing and what mantle i encountered so when they say hug one another again don't be carried away by the last week's version of me i have received something that hug can be the hog that transfers favor. In the house of God, the man of God himself is a student in the school of the Spirit. There are graces he does not have, but is working in the church. It's not from him, it's from the workers. God gives him the honor because he's the leader. I have received impartation from children. You come to our ministry, you know the honor I have for my children. Even if, even if, you know, most of my people say we are your children. So I said, their children are in levels. I'm talking of the innocent. Let the little children come to me. You are already complicated with all your unbelief. Let me just deal with these ones. They have taught me humility. These children come to hug me and sometimes, Daddy, bring down your ears. And I'm bringing down my ears. And, Hi, I'm somebody's apostle. And here these children and they teach me. They remind me of how to receive from God. I never tell them no. And I wonder what I can, why I cannot tell them no. I said, this is the secret. When I become like them, then I've secured God's ears too. You see the adults standing and waiting and pushing and fighting and the children are comfortable. They just come, Daddy, I want biscuit. Today is my birthday. This is my report card. They come with confidence. And I said, okay, go and tell that auntie there to give you biscuit. Can I deny that child? That means there is a way I approach God. God, I need a house oh, in Lagos. Everybody can say, God, I need a house. Say, That's alright. I'm committed to attending to you. But someone else will come and say, God, I need a house. And God will say, Lagos, you had him. He needs a house. Immediately. Every landlord, every rich man becomes in trouble because one person told God he needs a house. God, I need a land. That's what happened to your church here. When pastor showed me this place, I said, Pastor, ah, I know you're a man of God, but you are really a man of God. <laughs> are we together? Yes. Thank you, man. Conviction. Somewhere as we as we prepare to round up, I will call Pastor and his wife. Somewhere, not 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 now. And they will come and will stand together and speak over the workers. It's important to not only drink of the grace of strangers, but the grace upon your man of God. It's not idolizing. It's not idolatry. Don't mind ignorant people and some of the things that they say. I know that there are imbalances here and there. But let me tell you sincerely, there are cheap victories. There were people, let me tell you, I remember those days when God began to expand God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. I remember that time. Do you know, people would come to testify and say, I just got a job I didn't apply for. I thought it was so unfair. I said, what is the meaning of this? I mean, this guy, somebody just decided to go abroad and say, I should take over his warehouse. And I'm saying, my God. And I found out that 
you can actually be under a grace and even before you learn how it works you can be receiving the result is the benefit of understanding there are people who came under certain graces they were non titers i tell you but the devourer didn't come near them he was supposed to come near them except that a grace and a covenant had built an immunity against them so their purpose of learning is not to really drive the devourer is to maintain continuity of certain blessings that had come hallelujah there is no man that God calls that he does not give a message an anointing and a jurisdiction of influence when God wants to promote you in the spirit these are the three things also that he will multiply the strength of your message an increase of your grace and then an increased fear of influence and influence also means people because in the multitude of men is a king's honor so when God honors you he causes your voice to reach more people are we learning something this morning yes i have trained and taught my workers to know how to place a demand there are battles you should honestly not maybe let me just give the last point let me not go ahead of myself the rewards let's talk quickly the rewards that follow kingdom service the rewards that follow being a faithful worker that your first assignment is your spiritual growth then your service and that in serving you must be governed by conviction i love you jesus but i love pastor sholatu i love his wife i love the leadership they don't have to be perfect perfection is unnecessary and exhausting i've taught you mercy conference go and get the teaching all of us are men apostle i love you have you seen me when i'm hungry no sir have you seen me when i'm angry no sir you know, I've said that most people love Jesus because they can't see him. If Jesus comes for two weeks on earth in the flesh, many people will reject, deny, and even kill him. Looking for perfection, a perfect church, a perfect workforce, a perfect head of department, a perfect head of that unit, is a joke because you are not one yourself. So, we're not trying to deal with some childish things here. We're discussing real issues. You will find angry people as your leaders. You will find temperous people as your leaders. There are times you will see higher and better than them. Justifiably so. But then you are mandated to submit sometimes to their limitation. Let me tell you, God has a way of remedying everything. Your assignment is to remain faithful and true. A gifted rebel is not an asset. A gifted rebel is not an asset. No matter who comes from the US or UK and comes to our ministry now and says, I want to join the worship team, believe me, he must pass through the system. I will not suddenly tell my people, well done, you know that I love you, but right now we are looking for growth. And since you are not coming from the US, no. it's more than a voice. I need people who know and discern and understand and respect what I represent. It is the mistake that many people make, and I'm saying this respectfully. Please, do not automatically endorse people without a track record of loyalty, a track record of spiritual growth. More than skill, they must understand and catch the spirit of the vision. Otherwise, their skill will give them access and their rebellion will make them to draw others. hallelujah there are several people who see me and some of them respectfully speaking they come from outside the country and they come and say apostle i love you i came god said you should come and mentor me i say listen to the, the teachings and sometimes yeah, just because you think you came from wherever suddenly will i stop what i'm doing just because i want to you go and listen to the message that's how god uses to mentor me too so you listen to the message you settle down you listen with all your heart Beware of people who just come emotionally to be your armor bearer. They come emotionally to be, um, um, I, I come to donate myself. I just want to be a drummer for the glory of God. This is all I want to do. Be careful. It may not be you. It may be something that they saw that they love. The flamboyancy, the dexterity. The anointing is very magnetic. 
It's amazing how many times when I minister another person, you come to meet you and say, I've always known you are my father. I say, hey, you don't know how my fatherhood is. Go and ask questions first before you follow me and get angry for nothing. You are my father, you are my mother, you are my sister, you are my this, and you know, and people say these things, and, and sometimes they are sincere. Apostle, I'm leaving where I am, I'm coming down to Zari, I'll come and stay, I'll walk with you, I'll wash your toilets, I'll... I don't hate them, I know they are sincere. I know that they will learn their lessons in the future, but for now, I know what they are saying. What they are saying is, I love you, and I truly honor the grace of God upon your life. I discern what their hearts are saying. Workers must be trained. No matter how skillful, there is a spirit. Nobody begins to walk in the ministry without that impartation and that prayer. It's impossible. I don't know how you do it here, but back there, Pastor, we do. We hold workers retreat twice a year. And there are times when I get to teach the workers. I share with them some of these things. We talk about the technical aspect of our work and all of that. I'm sorry we may not have the time to discuss that in this morning session. It's not a standard workers meeting. You get the idea? And so I'm communicating truths that are applicable to everyone. But it is important for you to understand that conviction and loyalty is true. Come. Have you heard this? The other day, do you know, I saw Pastor Shola shouting and somebody said, Are you, you don't know? Let me tell you my own story. The other day when he shouted, be careful. People who corner you to begin to sponsor rebellion, they are, they are killing your light. I know this does not make sense, but believe what I'm telling you. There are men of God you will never hear me talk about. It doesn't mean I don't see. I'm not blind. But my mouth will not speak. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Father, I pray for my pastor. Shalakatuskia. On Sunday, he's going to be coming to preach. In the name of Jesus, he just returned from a trip. I don't know how tired he may be. But in the name of Jesus, Father, we see what is happening around marriages. Protect him. Keep him. You know, a lot of people don't pray for... Do you know that service is not just cleaning chairs? That intercessory ministry, the greatest way any man can bless any man of God is not to give him a car or a house, is to bow your knees to the Father of glory. Pray. The challenge that, be, you know, people say, Apostle, I want to be you. I say, ah, better rebuke that statement quickly. You don't know what it means to be me. Do you know the attacks per day that follow this man? When the Bible says arrows that fly by day, he wrote it for some of us. So the arrows that fly by day, the noisome pestilence. I, I know you love me today, but if tomorrow you hear that, ah, this apostle, there's a charm in his room. You say, you see, we know, we, we, I suspected that that level of anointing. <laughs> oh, you must pray. We are men. We are men. You must pray. The challenges. Jesus cried. Jesus wept. Jesus cursed a tree because food will not come out of it. Imagine what men of God will cause when food doesn't come out. Jesus, the son of the living God, cursed a tree. Where did he keep patience? So you have to pray. Do you know there are times that I'm going for a, a, a meeting and I'm just tired and um, I'm just wondering what am I doing in this plane for God's sake and as soon as I arrive the people are happy as possible we can't believe you are here and I say oh dear <laughs> I'm here oh. all of me with the tiredness with the grace with the anointing we are all here and the unfortunate thing is that the part that is needed is the revelation and the anointing the tiredness remains with you you need to pray ask the wife of the of, of an average man of God the sacrifices they make I'm telling you you are lying down with your husband in the night he gets up like as something is wrong and he's strolling in the room Shalice Kabadazia honey is anything no, 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 no. just sleep just sleep God is revealing I just saw the vision of a new auditorium and she's saying this, this man Lord what did I marry <laughs> they want me oh what did I marry? And yet the vision comes to pass. And then everybody is clapping. And when they say celebrate the woman of God, they say, well, you see the one that saw the vision? <laughs> Listen, brothers and sisters, let me tell you this. You have to understand the mystery 
of this local assembly the house of god and what it takes to be a worker a worker listen we're about to pray a worker is not just one who serves a worker is one who defends a worker is one who protects hear me household of david a worker is one who protects a worker is one who defends the greatest ally of any man of god should be his workforce as much as you love me i'm here only for today and then i'm back tomorrow the greatest defense i have aside from god and family is the dear people who believe in me enough to be part of the team listen believe your pastor believe your pastor love him with all your heart sincerely be willing to defend that which he stands for pray for him do not be the one allowing the devil to use you to plant wrong seeds no be a worker indeed being a worker will cost you your reputation being a worker will cost you your time being a worker will cost you your energy being a worker will cost you a lot but it is the price that's why being a worker is not cheap only God can tell these people and where they walk and the various sacrifices. You can see that I'm standing here and they're standing with me. It's a sacrifice. But do you think, brothers and sisters, that you will really serve the purposes of God as committed to a man and God will leave you empty-handed? There are benefits. There are benefits. Let's wrap up with them. The rewards, number one, Exodus chapter 23, please, from verse 25 and 27. Exodus chapter 23, from verse 25 and 27. Please read with me, household of David. Ready? Read, please. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Uh huh. The number of thy days I will fulfill. Please hear me. I know we live in a day and age where it is cheap and easy to criticize men of God. Cheap and easy and marketable to criticize churches. It's easy for us to see the weaknesses of a man of God. But let me tell you, when you serve God and you serve an anointing, there are people today who are men of God. Who, their assignment before was to serve those who were men of God before. Are we together now? Some years ago, I, I think I've shared it here. I used to play keyboard for a man. He had a prison ministry. They were part of the delegation that went to preach to Obasanjo when he was in prison. I played keyboard for him. This man you see standing today. While I was playing that keyboard, God was seen an apostle, not a keyboard player. I can't remember the last time I've touched keyboard in my life. But that was the journey. When you are serving, you are climbing a ladder. Climb well by serving well. Listen to what I tell you. That if, they, if a man serves God, please give us verse 25 again. You serve God and serve the anointing. There are people who have served God and have served me so much. When I see anything go wrong in their lives, I'm, I'm starved of sleep. I have to get up and say, Lord, you have to touch these people. You have to change their lives. Listen, you know your relevance by the vacuum that is created when you are not there. If your absence does not create any effect, it means your presence is not a blessing. You shall serve the Lord your God by serving His purposes. But you serve the purposes of God among other ways by serving in the house of god some of you are here today and while you are hearing me speak the spirit of god is speaking to you i have planted you in this house not just to be a member but to serve it is not members that receive it is those who serve hallelujah the bible says i will bless your bread for serving i will bless your water I will take sickness away from you. It is real. The fullness of your days you will fulfill. Reward number two. 
Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. Shalapos Kadebra Hasiyadabadada. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. And then he says, ye all. Everybody say, ye all. Not ye some. Ye all are partakers of my grace. Please give me volume. Let me teach you something now while praying. One of the most powerful mysteries of service is the privilege and the ability to in a covenant relationship partake of the grace now there are graces upon men and there are graces upon institutions i hope you know that yes sir so i can discern the grace that is upon pastor shola and I can serve my way into that grace while you are serving Shalaka Parukatasia. I gave you my testimony with Reinhard Bonke, my encounter in 2004. From the first day, sir, I desired the grace upon that man's life. I knew that I would not pocket my hand as a fellow man of God and go and receive that grace. No. The first day was wonderful. But I said, Lord, I have to, even if it's for 10 minutes. I, I was looking around. I wanted to join the workforce. And they said, um, no, we are trained. I said, training or no training? I must, you don't know where I came from. I must receive something here. And I was willing, you know, I saw they were willing, the people on wheelchair. I held them and I was pushing them. I said, Lord, this is how it will be in my meetings too. I served that grace with Renard Bonke. I never met with him one on one. But the grace came. It came solid from heaven to him. It was when he finished preaching. Did you know that in, in, in the later year, the man that interpreted for him would one day interpret for me in a crusade? That's how powerful that thing landed. When this grace is land, it shows that it has come upon you. Service is powerful. Many people mock believers because of the burden that comes with service. Five o'clock, you're on your way to church again. Ah, believers, they just, they just get cheap labor out of members. There may be people who are taking advantage of that. You, more than serving an anointing, more than serving a man of God, you are serving there are people you think evil about them in the secret. You start dying in the secret there. The jealousy of God, He has vowed a vow upon their lives. Can you be that person today? There are graces that God has put upon this house. There are graces God has put upon Pastor Sholani's wife. There are graces that God has put upon your, your choir. Some of you here are trusting God to step into dimensions of the worship ministry. Yes, you want to become the Don Moens and all of that, but where you are, you can start. You can start by honoring this grace. God can speak to you and say their next attire, maybe their uniform or whatever it is, put something on ground. I vowed a vow and I cried to God. I said, Lord, for many years, may I be the biggest giver and partner in my ministry. This, this are truth. I will not hide it from you. I have a list of ministries that I give to consistently. Some of them never know. It's from the depth of my heart. I may not be able to go and sweep the churches. You heard me give my testimonies of going to of wanting to go to the US to go and scrub the toilets of Charles and Francis Hunter as a man of God I was not going there as Apostle Joshua Selman no you can serve your way into anointings Elisha served his way into graces you can use sacrifice where you don't have the opportunity to serve your seed can can serve was it not a seed I carried to Canaan land to go and drop in the life of God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. I was already a man of God in my own regard. Too. And I dropped that seed and I came out in the presence of everybody. 
And the Lord told me, kneel down on the ground there in Canaan land. I knelt down and he said, put your hand there. He says, from today you have entered the overflow anointing. It was service that connected me to certain strange graces of favor. I've shared with you my story. That I saw two women and I said, please, you are elderly women. You are my mothers. Not biological, but let me honor you. Honor will bring you into prepared blessings you are not even aware of. I remember paying for sugar cane for them. And they blessed me. And one of that old mama looks at me and then she tells me, my son forever walk upon gold. Is the grace that opens the two leaf gates of territories is more than money. If all you have is money, you are not rich. You must have access to the loyalty of a generation. We are ready to pray seriously. I apologize, I know we've taken some time. But I share the burden of your pastor to see that the workers in this house become partakers of this grace. Every time I have the opportunity to come here, I see the sacrifices of your people from the protocol to the welfare to the ushers and everybody. And honestly, it is in my heart. The, the greatest desire of every man of God is not just to see that he's blessing people. Which kind of people? If you bless your people, they are increasing. That the next time we come to household of David, open doors, greater levels in the spirit, greater miracles, breakthroughs. It gladdens the heart of everyone. Gladdens the heart of everyone. Any man of God will cry. I remember years ago, 2014 or 13, we lost one of my dear ladies. She was a head of department. I loved her so dearly. She was an architect and this lady for some reason and the way she died i took responsibility under my covering that kind of death i went for a retreat three days i said lord what happened that my eyes did not see what is the excellency of the prophetic if my people are dying under that grace when you love when people serve you and serve that anointing you become indebted to their welfare not just by physically giving them money alone but seeing to it that they rise. Is God blessing us? In your name we will rise Adonai Please rise up on your feet. In your name In household of David, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. The Bible declares that in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. Prayer point number one. Lord, give me conviction. Where I have been serving just as a ritual, where I have not discerned the grace that is upon this house, the grace upon your servant, I obtain grace from God to see the grace to see and serve with understanding. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Sila parusa da barande ke de bariatosia. Please lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Look at me. I want you to pray. Lord, the grace to give my best in this house. Hear me. The truth is that some of you here, 
you are already serving your way to your own ministry too not everybody will be here forever some of you god will also give you your ministries one day it doesn't just have to be a pulpit ministry let there be a track record this is what i teach my people even if it's two weeks you have to serve give your best let it be that tomorrow you will not see the destiny of this ministry and be ashamed because you did not give your best you are going to pray lord in any way i have not given my best i obtain grace and mercy from god in heaven to pray myself like a drink offering lift your voice and pray lift your voice pray Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number three. Please look at me. One of the ways we serve in the house of God is to serve with our gifts. When Jesus was born, three men came. The Magi. The Bible says they came with gifts to serve His Majesty. They came with gifts of gold. They came with gifts of frankincense. They came with gifts of man. Your gift may be your connection to government. You can serve the house with that access. For some of you, your gift may be artistry. There is something you can do in the house of God. For some of you, your gift may be in the area of music. God has given me that grace. Some of you have certifications that are useful to be used in the house of God. Some of you is the gift and the grace of the blessings of God upon your life. Some of you is the gift of access. I was touched when Pastor Shola shared with me about a dear woman of God in this church one time that um, the Mercy Conference and Billboard, she just collected the soft copy and broadcasted it in the Billboard service. I remember the first time I came to this church. Um, remember when he sold an attack? It was amazing what he did for me. Because he didn't even measure me. He just looked at me and went and sold it. And, and it fitted me. I said, who is this man? I was so blessed. I prayed for him from the depth of my heart. How many people continue to rust away their gifts in the house of God? Don't you know that service in the house of God gives you an opportunity for expression and development. There is a place for you if you are serious. Some of you, God has blessed you with the grace for intellect. The secretariat is waiting for you. You can honor your way and become serious. Some of you, God has granted you grace for children. They will cry when everybody is talking to them except you. It's a grace. Hallelujah. Lord, what is it that I can do in this house? What is my contribution? How can I lift up the hands of the man of God so that the purposes of God committed to this ministry will begin to rise and thrive? Lift your voice and pray. And as you pray, expect God to speak. Please pray. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. What can I do for you, my Lord? I want you to know. My heart is yours. Sing it one more time. What can I do? What can I do for you? I want you to know. Hallelujah. 
Look at me. One day, your life will only be measured of how much of it was given to the purposes of the kingdom. When you stand before His Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, you will not be asked how well you educated yourself, as important as that is. A day will come when I stand before His Majesty. It will only be that which was recorded on account of my service for Him. That we stand before Him proud. We stand before Him happy. And He said, Lord, I did my best. Hmm. I am a life that was changed because of your service. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. If you are in the evangelism department, Lord, fresh fire. They may laugh at us, but we will win souls. We will see to it that there will be no Sunday that there is no soul coming to Jesus. You are in the prayer department. I will pray. In the rain, you are in the music team. Lord, I will rehearse. No matter, I will never be offended by my music directors. I give my best. You are in the finance department. I will not only count money, I will sow into it. i like you to pray. I don't know what unique office you occupy in this church and what department but lift your voice and say Lord grace to give my best the grace to give my best we are rounding up the grace to give my best the grace to give my best the grace to give my best, to give my best. while you are praying my request Pastor Sholan his dear wife please come the grace to give my best someone is praying Hallelujah. Please listen to me. This is not religion. Believe me. Whether you are a worker or you are just coming here to church, this is the man and the woman of God that God has put over this ministry. I believe in them. I truly believe in the grace of God upon their lives. And I'm going to give them the mic. The woman of God is going to speak from the bowels of our spirit just make declarations over your life please i want you to believe it and then pastor will make declarations i'm standing in agreement with them this morning we're at the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken and while they are speaking please believe and insist that this week you must return i know there is a miracle service in the night but that this, some of you even before evening that Lord, I have served your purposes, but it's time for I, I need to shift to another dimension. Hallelujah. Please believe it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And say, Father, thank you for tonight. I know you will do something in my life that has never been done before. Oh, bless him because his presence is in this place. Manda grasta bala kapos. Zipa kumbria sta bala daba korata kresti bala. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Lift your hands and say, Lord, let your word come tonight to set me free, to deliver me, to prosper me, to enlighten me, that I will rule in the day and rule in the night, that I will be a true ambassador of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to have everyone around this night. Good evening. Just walk up to 10 people, give them a big hug, tell them it's good to have you around.
Hallelujah. Why are you in a hurry to sit down tonight? Hallelujah. Don't worry, I understand it's the revelation that you are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Can we worship God for just two minutes? Nina Kawo Yabo. Nina Kawo Yabo. Sirkin Salama. Sirkin Salama. Kawo ya bo Sergin salama Nina kawo ya bo Sergin salama Kaine sergin salama Sergin salama Kaine sergin salama Tonight, Lord, we declare that you are the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace. You have come to bless us tonight. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. Tonight I'll be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight... I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I, when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title, Commanding Results. I didn't write it, I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight, if you will believe. Hmm. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept, the night i just saw it call it commanding results hallelujah what makes certain people to move in levels of results levels of power the manifestations of the word of god what makes certain ministries prosper and increase what makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. 
what make others very blessed and prosperous what makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne commanding results never forget this message for the rest of your life please final year students open up your ears your heart your spirit your life and receive this message tonight oh, 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 oh. seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word the ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time tonight Lord as we explore this ancient book I pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives Lord I pray that we will not disregard this revelation tonight I pray that we will believe it we will respect it we will obey it and Lord we are sure that you will perform hallelujah hallelujah Matthew 21 Matthew 21 Say in the name of Jesus The word of God Is making me a sign And a wonder Like the ancients of old The generals of old The mighty men of old I am making history By the power of the word I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21. I start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you are there, say amen. amen. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger hallelujah and when he saw a fig tree along the way he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves say after me but leaves hmm. only and said to it let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever and presently the fig tree withered away the bible says jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry hallelujah so every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree are you listening to me and the bible says that jesus saw a tree from afar it looked wonderful green and jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit hallelujah only
only leaves and no fruit and he was angry it didn't look like he loved that tree because he cursed the tree out of anger he said let no fruit come out of you again why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming and you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit hallelujah okay thank you i am sure that jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree that tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green hallelujah and every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger and the bible says when jesus came close he thought the leaves were in the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves no fruit what kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size have fruit, i mean uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit and jesus cursed it in anger hallelujah that tree reminds me of many lives and many believers we look anointed we talk anointed we act anointed hallelujah reminds me of many ministries reminds me of many men of god many pastors and apostles and prophets hallelujah reminds me of all kinds of people many leaders they look like they are green they look attractive hallelujah and then you come near only to find out that there is no food that can satisfy the hunger of people you will be blessed tonight oh you will be blessed tonight that's a contrast because you see jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves john 15 verse 8 he said hearing is the father glorified that ye bear much fruit this is what brings glory to the father not that you become green hallelujah not that you just become green and blossom but you bear fruit hallelujah because when the hungry come they are looking the bible says jesus was hungry if you were not hungry nothing will make him to look for a tree because he was passing and he was hungry and then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves and he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit say i will bear fruit much fruit in the name of jesus hallelujah and so why are certain lives like this you find out that there is no food whatsoever listen to me if you have been serving the lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of your fruit something is wrong the end of faith is a performance and a manifestation but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed he said being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work he is able to perform it to the end so the life of a christian eventually in your journey some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted psalms 1 blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law does he meditate day and night how are we sure he meditates day and night because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water other trees receive their nourishment from the rain but this guy receives his own from under he is planted by the rivers as a result he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither but the bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit hallelujah the bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar because they may not see the river that he's planted close to so how will they see 
he will yield his fruit in season yes we agree that okay it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of god and believe it and absorb it but eventually there should be a sign the bible says and elijah prayed and he told his servant go and check he went he said there is no sign and he prayed at the seventh time there was a sign there will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing whether you are commanding power and authority if it is the real tongues you have been praying for years something in your life there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress are you listening to me if the bible says the word of god is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom are you listening to me the bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the lord if you have been walking and living by the word truly a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence say after me evidence there must be an evidence noah told men that god told him that rain was coming true or false it took a long time but eventually the bible says that god vindicated him abraham was a man who trusted god and even when he was 75 years hallelujah a promise was made to him and he waited 25 years for that promise but eventually the end of faith is a performance if you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of God eventually there must be a performance every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever are you listening to me if one area of your life is receiving results it's a sign that the other area will come so God will encourage you if academically you are not doing well spiritually you are not doing well health wise you are not doing well suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the spirit is at work in you what does it tell you it means fruit is already being produced is that correct and it will motivate you to begin to trust his word in other areas but where every of your life is a dead a barren wilderness something is wrong are you listening to me there are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever they pray more than anybody else they fast more than anybody else hallelujah there are all kinds of devotional circulating in town but i want to ask you a question tonight how long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree when will that leaf begin to translate into fruit that the hungry can come and begin to eat because you see it is deceit jesus saw a tree and was attracted and when he came to the tree he just found leaves and there was no fruit and he was angry and he cursed the tree he said may fruit never come out of you again hallelujah two secrets tonight number one you want to command results in your life number one you must have absolute faith in god absolute faith in god demonstrated by total obedience absolute faith don't just write faith in god absolute faith in god absolute faith in the word of god demonstrated by total obedience unwavering obedience hmm. absolute faith that you believe that god is faithful and that god is able the thousands of promises that are scattered in this bible god cannot be joking with you hallelujah absolute faith listen we have ended up complicating christianity but do you know i i notice 
that most of the people that shook their generation, most of them were not even educated people. They took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by. Verse 12. John 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works. Say greater works. And greater works shall he do. This is Jesus Christ talking here. Not an angel. If he sent a prophet, would have said, oh, the prophet didn't hear well. Are you listening to me? Jesus himself said this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes. And Smith Wigglesworth found this and said, Lord, are you serious about this? That an uneducated person like me, if I can believe, if I can believe, and God said, yes. Catherine Kuhlman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily, he that believes, not he that is born again, not he that is praying in tongues. He that believes. Absolute trust. The works that I do. The works that I do. He shall also do. He say, and greater works. Greater works. Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater greater works that means if you are not seeing greater works what is the diagnosis you do not believe now let me tell you something when it comes to spiritual growth you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for. Kabo are you listening to me there are some people standing and praying oh lord bring a boat and then we see others get on that water and begin to move the fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing it kills the excuse that is god that is responsible are you listening to me he that believes in me the works i remember one of the first times i read this scripture i was studying pastor chris's message and Kenyon on faith we we're going to prepare for crusade never had that experience we didn't know what to expect but we took this word and said lord this is true how many of you truly believe in god how many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen. There are many of you. Who have been sitting grumbling shouting at god saying god you are not true do you know you are one over how many people who are saying god is faithful 
if you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant. One word, holy. Are you listening to me? Do you believe God's word? Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors. There are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you, can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you? There are many of you from the time you got to final year, your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God. Whatever I fear in my life, the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there because perfect love casts out fear. So if you are afraid of the future, let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet. Are you listening to me? Absolute trust. Father Abraham and the generals of old these guys believed God and there was a performance and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith. You came to ABU and you believed God that you'll be a success. Then your first result 1.5, 7 carryovers. Hey, hey God you said this boy you just said Lord I believe you. You just said Lord I believe you. You just said no matter what Lord your word is true and I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you that it's going to be blessing you. Suddenly your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quote. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God. Because the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. I challenge myself every time I say, Lord, why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday day before okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life the ministry of Jesus Christ and tears filled my eyes while I was talking because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw this guy was a man of faith nothing moved him he believed the father he believed the word he had such audacity he commanded results believe us what is wrong with us hallelujah i tell you the truth it's easy to feel like you are trying and i understand you are doing your best but it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. 
I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life. Then we have our normal life. The one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise. Let's reason now. Don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims. But when we step out there, there are all kinds of fears. And we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith. But it may not be absolute. Because I know what absolute faith has done in my Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith. They rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. Look at the life of Jesus for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room. What, what kind of result will a man command like this? There are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves. Read the Bible. The, see, the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1, 2, 3. Go and read it. The Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum. There, multitudes heard about him and they came. Jesus went to the desert. The same multitudes came. Jesus went by the seaside. The same multitudes came. Jesus climbed the mountain. The same multitudes came same result same power he casted out devils he healed the sick he preached the word he taught the word the performance look at me all of you look up if you were to suddenly see the vision of jesus christ the real jesus and he stood here and jesus suddenly made an announcement and said i am giving you 10 minutes the first 10 people who come to me whatever their needs are it will be met how many of you will check your we before coming why are you not doing that to me simple i you you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place are you listening to me if you are hungry for god you have to get the truth and press to it i assure you listen to me brothers and sisters if jesus christ walked here right now before you finish the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say jesus you don't know how i've waited i already have my list i'm not about to write and you just drop it every time people heard about jesus they started laughing you know why they knew the result had come. They just started laughing. Their own issue was to get to see him. But your issue is not to see me. Your issue is, at, is to ascertain. Lord, now that I've seen Joshua, help him. Let there be grace that is available this night. To at least be able to meet some of my needs. I tell you, you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say, I wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service. Two have been answered. In my mind, I say, okay. Seven minus two is what? Help me. Seven minus two is what? If you drop your prayer point directly to the person Christ, how many will be met? Tell me how many will be met. This is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing. I refuse to give excuses. It simply means there is a light that I have not seen. There is a depth of anointing I have not stepped into. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that I have not gotten to yet. That's why whether you say Apostle Josh, Bishop Josh, I won't be misled with all of those nonsense. There is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Those of you who are already confident, I'm laying hands on three people. I'm laying hands on five people. You stopped reading your Bible. That's why. 
pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride and find out that there is work to be done I tell you if ministers knew this the Bible would be the best tool that they will have I refuse to give excuses are you listening to me that my life will make such a mark see we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional people say this guy is not real oh be careful this Joshua Selman guy is not real I'm warning you now tomorrow don't say it's any kind of thing because people are so complacent the average pastor there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry one to have a crowd two to at least be able to say something from this Bible it doesn't matter what it is number three and then let there be at least just one person who will fall they say you think I'm playing oh what a shame what a shame what a shame is that what you think will shake the world that's not uncommon enough we're talking about commanding authority over territories one miracle that let me tell you something in the days of the generals all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did right now when last the man must pay for advert if you see advert in the newspaper he paid for it to say okay my program is around please just check are you listening to me there are some people in zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia what are we boasting for hmm. look at elijah he stands somewhere the whole city the whole city didn't hear him he just said there shall not be rain the whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this i say one guy elijah one man like this and the gist started spreading elijah who is he they said go and look for him now and the king says because the king's ego is, is spoiled he's embarrassed he says go and catch that man 50 people march and stand and elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain and they interrupt his fellowship this was a man like you are you listening to me old covenant for you new creation old covenant elijah looks and says if i be a man of god let fire come down right now we have different ways of speaking when you stand you say if i be standing in the authority and moving in the office the department and the office of the christ let it come fire doesn't come you're not getting it we're just teaching congregations english and vocabulary we're just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church well right now there's improvement everybody is falling everywhere everybody is falling everywhere just watch tv a man of signs and wonders before they say anything people just fall and that's all you have to show the world something is wrong that's all you have to show the world that a man just fell down and then they all now prophecy self is even him come you are you are gladys you are from the east your mother is sick your uncle traveled you are an ABU student and then the congregation claps what, what how look real prophets this is what they say there is coming a problem in zaria but i stop it that's a real mandate that you stand and tell the people what satan wants to do and you stop it the creative power of the spoken word. We just have a group of revelatory people. Even the native doctors can create. They have helped to give you the one to reveal. When are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results? Listen, if two dead people, how many? If two dead people rise in koinonia 
I assure you, if you come by 2.30 next Friday, you will stand outside. Critics, look at the Bible. The Bible says people came and filled where Jesus was sitting. Mark chapter 2. And the Bible says others were standing outside. When Jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought, the Bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front, they said, why are you forgiving his sins? If they came late, they would have been outside. Even then, they rushed and came early for that meeting. Jesus had no nonsense. He climbed the mountain. Brothers and sisters, human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain. The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing. Go to the house of politicians. You will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside. You say, why is he? I'm waiting for his excellency. That's the, it's called hunger. The man has fruit. Where he got it is irrelevant. He shall has fruit. When believers come to church and after one hour, it's not true. I tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire. In the days of Amphi McPherson, listen, she had a program called Stretcher Only. Meaning, if you are not sick, you are not invited for that meeting. What is our the, name? The kind of conferences we have right now business special for only the ones that are successful. Only you are not successful, you are not a businessman, walk outside. The people who are already successful, Pastor. Don't lie, it's not your anointing that is making them successful. These guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money, and then you stand and say, Receive, they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of 5 million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what takes two months salary to complete it and buy his car if i can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car i'm a real prophet don't go and meet somebody that's already tried if i meet pastor williams i say a hey, jeep tomorrow of course common sense tells me he's ah. Am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia. Where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a... A woman's daughter and she was crying and saint patrick was just meandering around the street and he saw her he said madam why are you crying she said a snake beat her he said a snake beat you where where did the snake go to hallelujah and they showed him the forest he entered and sat for the snake he held it he said you and your kind i banish you from this land till today there's no snake in ireland Hallelujah. The king got to hear gist about St. Patrick. He said, who is that man? They said, that guy is, we don't even know what to call him. And the king said, what sign will he show me? The king's son died six months. He said, go and call St. Patrick. Six months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life story, St. Patrick looked, he signed his signature and wrote St. Patrick on the grave. He said, dig it out. That's how they carried that boy out. What are we boasting for? It was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church, a Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. 
and then they came and the wood was short the guy just held the wood and started moving that's how he drew it and completed it I tell you the truth Auntie McPherson who organized programs the only people invited are those on stretchers that's a real miracle service not what we are doing Charles and Francis Hunter they work close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind they are wheelchairs. And just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. This is the kind of service. There are many men of God, if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair, they just do as if they didn't see I know my God will heal. They are laying hands and will just jump the person. And then you say, what manner of man is Jesus? He made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter. Men lined up in the streets because they said, Peter is coming, Peter is coming. And I can imagine a woman, please come from bed. And Peter says, bless you bless you. Suddenly you are hearing shouts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we have half of that anointing, I will put this thing will be a basket, a bowl, and then you put it, you write my name Joshua, and then my picture will be here. You come and touch it, lick it, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, bath with the poor water on it and go and bath. Madness. All those things because we do not understand. Women shook their generations. Right now, there are men of God who are on TV but nobody knows them. They air three times a week. As they are saying now, we thank you for this broadcast. You cannot even remember who preached again. The only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a printing press. Noise. F leaves with no fruit. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you? Because we need to rise. Friends, this is an apostolic generation. You cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing what we are doing now is joke i tell you it's not ministry yet archbishop benson idahosa he was driving okay they were driving him an armed robber stopped them back back stop the driver was afraid idahosa just opened his mouth he told the person to open the door for him first he came out the armed robber lie down lie down he just looked at them he said one of three things must happen to you this night. Either you will be paralyzed, you will be blind, or you will die. But one must happen this night. Will Lamb Brothers ever, Spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of John G. Lake. You know the way they admit people in Shika? That's how you come to his hospital. You collect a form. To prove that you had the healing anointing, you will go and bring seven people that you healed. That's how he admits. If you say you are sensing the call of God upon your life, he said, go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done. Then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff. Can you imagine? That was a yastic. Now everybody, a man with a strong healing anointing. I came all the way 50 kilometers to tell you. Your... While they are talking, the demons are saying, now wow. Saying, before, when men were around, there was fire. You know these demons have been around since. They knew the fire upon these men. And they ask one another, they say, ah, when these guys died, they didn't transfer anything. And all of those men, they were called brother this, brother that. Now you call Joshua Selma an apostle. You know, I fear that name because I just remember Apostle Paul, Apostle Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle John G. Lake, 
Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Josh, for where? For where? You won't deceive me. No way. But many of you are already parading sons and daughters. You say, call me pastor this. Go and sit down. Go and sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe and yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 it says so that day without us that means our generation is still coming the Bible says this do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died I'll share with you some stories today before Smith Wigglesworth died when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro he told him something he said look make sure you don't die with your anointing he said look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. He said, I see a generation. A generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing. Apostle Babalola, CAC. You see, there are many denominations today that don't, do not even believe what their founders live for. Apostle Babalola, it was said, listen, it was said that that guy was so powerful. A time came when he was preaching and he started lifting, literally. See, the water that, the concept of holy water came from him. He was thirsty, praying on a mountain. And there was no water and he struck the rock and said, let water come. Men, they are the type you say men to, not not. Not, not the, the, the people were saying, "Man, we are, we are called, you call us children." Am I challenging you? Do you know Apostle Babalola was moving? There was a council. Now, this one I attended a pastors' conference by Apostle A. T. B. Williams in Kafanchan, Emmanuel Kure's conference, and he, and he was saying this. He said that Apostle Babalola, when they wanted to call him. When people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of God, there were certain elders, like seven or eight of them. They said they don't believe he's called. Look at the miracles that this man was doing. They said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing. In other words, this guy is still a joker, he's playing ministry. All of them prayed, and a few said, actually, they have received confirmation. The elders refused. They say, until God speaks to every one of them, one by one, before they were agreed. One day, they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street and apostle babalola just came out from the forest he was just moving in the city not going for a program no protocol no mic he was just meandering around the street and that guy came out and people were running yard matches and was driving people and then the elders were watching the lord told them to watch and they were watching through the window and apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him he said, but you are not mad now. He collected his match. He said, sit down here, please. That was how those men confirmed that God really called this guy. Now, how do we confirm that God has called a man? Once you just see a guy that is handsome, he looks like Eliab, you just say, surely. Surely. And see, you see ministers and the body of Christ, there is no pressure whatsoever on us. To press for more you look at a man of god and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of god say i'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch i'm so fulfilled there are sick people coming there are oppressed people coming and jesus caused that victory he said because you have deceived me you made me to come all the way you made me to do everything I'm doing. And you have been deceiving many like that. Let me tell you, there are many people that God himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor. Because if we keep deceiving God's people and claiming, come for miracle service, are the people really receiving miracles? Or do we just celebrate one miracle, a fractured hand, God healed? When I was watching what the media people played, 
I tell you, I, I was happy, but I was angry at the same time. Or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired. They just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it. That's the real me. Now, people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens. They say, drink it, prophetic water. You drink it. You, 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 they say, take, come and buy a special. I saw a man of God praying for one woman. The anointing oil is like this, 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 uh, uh, swear, this pure tag bottle. He poured some on her head. Told her to pour some. Hey, what men of God do to people? And ask her to drink everything. That's how she drank in my presence. It was on, on TV. Drank everything. The man said, yes. If you drink oil like that, you will be sick. You will be very sick. We spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person. Look at Jesus. I will be made clean. Come on. He saw the demons go and they left. What is wrong? Am I? Is the only me that is having this anger? Many of you are saying, I won't be a man of God. Please turn and face these people. Say, I believe the word of God. The second key. Your faith can be seen, friends. The second key. I'll share this quickly and we'll pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews. So open your eyes. Open your ears. Then you understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes, open your ears, and then you understand that the Lord is here. Hebrews 7, verse 7. Let me show you. This is one of the biggest secrets of my life. I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight. I tell you, if you believe this, if you believe this, you will be changed forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. Lord, open our eyes. Respect what you are about to hear. <laughs> Verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and what blessed him number two to whom also abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of salem which is king of peace three without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abided a priest continually verse six but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises. Verse 7, read with me together. One to go. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Read it one more time. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. Stand up. Please stand up. Just stand up. Pray a prayer in one minute and say, Lord, my life is about to change as I hear this revelation. I humble myself. Let your word come as light. Please pray this prayer just one minute because God is about to change lives right now. God is about to shift levels. Please pray. Oh, yes, doors will open forever for certain people. Lord, I pray. I pray. This revelation has changed my life. It has changed the lives of many. I pray that men will be commanders of results. 
Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Look at this. Listen to me. Let me give you certain revelations. Number one. You must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering and he blessed one man called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Melchizedek looked at Abraham and blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, possessor of the Most High. And Paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of Melchizedek and Abraham. And he told him, he said, without contradiction, in the realm of the spirit, it is only the lesser. Are you listening to me? It's only one who is higher, who has the capacity, pastor, please come. Who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing. Follow me. In the realm of the spirit, listen to me. Only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you. And the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing. No man can draw you above his anointing. Are you listening to me? That's why when God wanted to swear, he looked for one who was higher than him. So he could submit to him and say, please help me swear to these people. When he did not find anybody, he said, oh, since I'm the only one, I swear by myself. Are you listening to me? Powerful principle. Listen, listen. I want to give you the unbeatable secret. The unbeatable secret of the anointing, growing in the anointing and financial prosperity. When you want to rise, you don't sow to people lower than you. They can't lift you. When you get to your wealthy place, this is called charity. Are you listening to me? You sow upwards. And then you are called higher. Are you following me now? Without contradiction, it is only the lesser that receives from the greater. Hallelujah. I want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing. I never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that I can do. For many of you, you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father. And many of you have passed anointings that can set you free. But because of the stereotype of ministry, it has to be me, my pastor, my father, my this and that. Listen to me. And without contradiction, the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater when i saw this scripture i repented from talking about men of god and people i want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals hallelujah listen to me in 2004 I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me, 
honor opens the door of any man's anointing you will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize i went pastor listen for six hours i was standing in that crusade ground you know what i was doing i was looking for what to do there was nothing to be done later on i saw them pushing people who were sick i said beautiful I said, can I join them? They say, I'm not part of the committee. They train them. I said, committee or no committee. I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seed. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a career of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost? And I stood. I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget, Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly, I looked up. And for the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know his crusades, you stand. Suddenly, I saw it had silvery wings. And the, the Lord just took me to this scripture. Where Elisha told Elijah, if you can see me. If you can see me as I'm taking up. Suddenly I saw that bed. I thought other people were seeing it. But I realized that I was the only one who was seeing it. Do you know by the time I finished the encounter with that manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I turned and I found out that I was already back in the stage. I don't know when I turned to face. And from that day an anointing came upon my life. There is no one I pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you listening to me? Many of you have cultivated the attitude of dishonoring people. I will never forget one time that I went to go and buy, was it sugar cane or something? And I saw two old women. Many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor. And I saw the old women, just 10 or 15 naira. I paid for them and they said, you know how old women bless. They were speaking and I didn't hear what they said, but I will never forget one thing one of the women said. He said, forever you will walk on gold. That's what she told me. Are you listening to me? As you see me like this, brothers and sisters, I am a product of many encounters and many anointings. Because I realize Everything you have not seen in your life, you have not known how to receive it. Whatever it is that you have not seen in your life, you have not yet known how to receive it. Because it's available. Are you listening to me? Before Charles and Francis Hunter died, when I heard that they died, I cried. You know why I cried? Because I was planning that I was going to go to the US and my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them guess what I wanted to go and do not to go and preach for them the way many of you want to do I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks I wanted to beg them to allow me scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater Are you listening to me? It's a law. Whoever has what you do not have has the ability to impart it upon you. Whether it's your roommate, whether it's your brother. Listen, there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny. If you are a barren woman, Go and find a woman that has given birth and say, Madam, can I please wash your plate? And without controversy, the lesser. They may not pray for you. It's a law that happens automatically. Are you listening to me? 
See, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible tells us something. Because of time I may not read it, just write it. Look up please. I studied my Bible and I saw that this principle was consistent. Do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Cheaply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. Are you listening to me? She acknowledged that truly there was no man like Solomon. And guess the next thing she did? She packaged her gifts and she gave Solomon question. How do you bless a man who is already blessed? Are you listening to me? Because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm. That woman heard of the fame of Solomon and said, ah, ah, no, no, I need to find out what is going on. And the Bible says she sowed and Solomon gave her everything she needed. That's what the Bible says. Are you listening to me? If your brother or your sister is not married instead of casting out devils and getting angry go and find a married couple and look at them they just got married and say please um, i bought a small gift to just bless you and without controversy you are fulfilling a law in the spirit suddenly you see yourself walking in the anointing i used to see benny Hinn. i loved him so much i see honor doesn't just mean you package a seed the Bible says, honor the Lord with your tithes. Many of you have been giving your tithes. That's why the heavens are not open. There is a way you carry it. I'm not talking of being sanctimonious. That you realize that I'm sowing to someone who is richer than me. I'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me. And he will take me. That's why the Bible says, my God, Paul speaking, shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory. Every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish, God will send a man who is higher than her and say, give him food. What is God doing? The widow of Zarephath. See, the Shunammite woman understood this. The moment she perceived he was a prophet of God, he said, quickly, let us build a place. And without controversy, whatever level you want to get to, there is a career of that anointing working in this earth. The reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class you go to class together but you do not know the difference hallelujah you have been castigating everybody who is married instead of sowing see let me tell you the truth i everybody i see every nice car that i see because i want to buy a car i just say lord thank you for this car if my friend buys a car today, I will be the first person to provide fuel for that car. I'm not a fool. I know this principle. Are you listening to me? You see why we are rich? Because we provide free bus transport for you. I don't know the kinds of anointings that are here. And I know that there are some anointings we do not have. So we sow into your anointing by providing bus. Many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing. These are the laws. Are you listening to me? every time i'm around a man of god when i went to dr akbami's church to minister it was an honor because he's a father in the land when i entered people were there looking at me oh this is the apostle joshua when i went in front of dr akbami i got down on both of my knees i don't know him he's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines And I greeted him and then I got up because without controversy the lesser 
is blessed of the greater are you listening to me many of you sit down and watch men of god on tv and you say kai this man's realm herself is so bad you have not gotten to where he's getting to you have three members and you are criticizing him there are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing i tell you you can listen to all my tapes the heaven will remain short that honor is a law are you listening to me look at the myriads of nigerians in abuja and lagos queuing for jobs their yard mate goes to a a lucrative office every day why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him you may not understand what you are doing but you are tapping into a law i tell you it will not take two weeks they will call you are you listening to me respect this principle i'm teaching you for your information let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry i'm sowing into the life of living faith i'm sowing into the life of kenneth copeland i'm sowing into the life of benny hin i'm sowing into the life of reinhard bonke i'm sowing into the life of kobus van rensburg i believe them when i got up i went to south africa i was fasting i was praying i didn't go to show that i'm going abroad i had serious business there he was a career of an anointing others were discussing and criticizing i said lord i know there is grace and i went there Smith Wigglesworth laid his hands on Lester Sumro. Are you listening to me? And Kobus was with Lester Sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me. When I went there, Kobus looked at me. He said, I want to connect you to the lineage of the generals. And he laid his hands on me three times. Sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news. It's not by age. If you understand the principle, you will rise. Are you listening to me? Listen to me, hear me. My mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry. And this is why I can never fail. You don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing. Are you listening to me? I respect the careers of this anointing. I saw into the lives of blessed people. Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet, what I would have paid for my hotel bills. And some of you just get up and say, how are these people getting their anointing? And all kinds of stories hallelujah rather than sell you when you don't celebrate an anointing forget about walking in it i will never allow a man who is greater than me do what i can do for him i go to a shop to buy something and i see an elderly woman i, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if i can pay he mustn't be a pastor hallelujah you want to raise children you see a woman that raised eight children all of them are disciplined there is an anointing that woman can you can tap into it hallelujah i see ministries that represent the things i want even in the realms of prosperity i couldn't understand the prosperity on oedeko's life i studied this man and read his books i couldn't find the key I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the camp. The Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And the Lord said, from today, everywhere you go, the land will open for you. And people keep criticizing we go to cgc is packed full with people we come here packed full blue roof see when you see a man prospering find out what law is being operated it's god that oversees his laws i can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something see
before all my brothers entered into a relation when they entered into a relationship i was concerned ask them valentine's day i was so into it many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise my sister is not married what of me don't these guys like me and you see your roommate who may not be as good looking as you look like every time she's cooking where are you cutting this food i'm cooking i want to sew into an anointing you are laughing at her then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you will marry and you you see that god you are not fair let me tell you life will never change until you change it for those of you who are waiting for things to change are you listening to me i'm showing you a law without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater hallelujah i spoke to the protocol because we are trusting god for our boss i told them they told me that rcf um i mean they were charging us a stipend for the boss i said very good because i was looking for a way to sow into their life i'm looking for a boss we are looking for a boss as a ministry what do we do we find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it many people sit in zaria here they are broke they are poor their ministries are broke but people are running from abuja running from everywhere they come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing i'm not talking of seed it's the law of honor are you listening to me thank you jesus if you believe this go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things nothing will change the bible says when god saw their faith faith can be seen is hope that cannot be seen many people have been doing hope what they call faith sometimes i sit down and i'm watching television and i watch benny him i watch kobus i watch all of these people and i'm kneeling down we took the leaders hear me and all the heads of department because commonwealth of zion assembly they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching you will be a wicked person to deny hallelujah other people were discussing who are these people said know this know that i told the leaders manasseh suggested it and i said quickly the heads of department and the ministers we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in abuja it wasn't because we wanted to waste money the lesser is blessed of the greater when we went there listen to me the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walk there the head of protocol went to go and meet them why will you be surprised that we are excellent and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater i'm showing you a key i promise you it will open any door every time i am in lack i find those who are prosperous quick quick with the remaining money i don't waste my time sitting i don't waste my time no no listen let me tell you something listen to me hi lord in john 21 the bible says peter said i want to show you something your skill can fail you are you listening to me it was a time of recession I was saying lord give me a word for this recession i've had many preachers and god showed me something do you know peter was a fisherman realize that there was a time jesus told him go and fish and take the mouth from the coin that means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity however there are times it can fail what law do you engage in when it fails let me show you the bible says peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish suddenly there was no fish a fisherman who used to fish all the time there was no fish and the bible says when you went jesus saw them listen to what jesus tells them in john 21 he said children how many people is jesus older than among the disciples he said children it was a test of honor children have you caught any fish they said no he said cast your net that's you have passed the test they would have said children Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening. 
when my mother came here that's why quickly before we said anything i did what i called her i said speak to this work without controversy when it was time for her to go back i packaged a dangerous seed and i went and met her i may be your son but this is not the issue of son now i tapped into that grace quickly many of you see careers of anointings that you want and you just keep looking at them all the time Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well he's a leader he finished serving from engineering students fellowship and he's very good let me tell you a little history about this guy are you listening to me for one year Mukhtar came and was before he started his business he was dry cleaning my suit for one year one solid year as a seed He knew what he was doing when you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing they are tapping into graces there are many of you you are your job is to grumble and complain there are many people that i honor and sow into their lives it's not because they are nice people i look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them i'm interested in the anointing when let me tell you when i'm watching a man that carries something i can slap you if you come to this to, to, to disturb me I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church. Before you do it, say, oh, I'm seen. And you are not getting anything. I give my rapt attention. My spirit is open. I'm saying, Lord, the, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes. I'm tired of this joke. Show me this key. And you sit down there. There are times I play messages of Benny Hinn. I'm not listening to the message. I just want to saturate under the anointing. And I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. For about one month, that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night. They will play all through the night. I'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake. Do you know that if you honor people, final year students, we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night many of you see the ministers you just come because they are your colleagues you just tap them ah, edgy alpha i'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg but i tell you the truth you can sit down and tap into anointings i never go and see a man that is higher than me empty-handed no matter what happens even if it is 10 naira i must put it in my pocket and at the end of it i'll bless him are you listening to me i want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working i repented from castigating people and criticizing people any grace that i see i humble myself i say lord you have empowered these people suddenly sometimes i listen to the tapes once do you know aside from last week's tape there is no koinonia message i don't listen to i can easily say it's my ministry I download it. I don't ask the media to bring it. I want it to cost me something. I download it. And every time I'm prophesying, or the man of God is prophesying rather, I get down on my knees. God is my witness. I say, Lord, I believe your servant is about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promise myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carried. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You're just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get fuel. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? Or many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. 
if I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I would just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water, I'm blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth and Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time, but I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life, they may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. You sow into the anointings. Every seed that comes into my life, I divide it. And I begin to sow. The tithe of this ministry, every week, each and every week we are sowing it. Many of you have been giving, but you have only been doing charity. You have not been rising. Because you look and say, ah, God tells you, package this seed. Go and sow it into Joshua Selman's life. He said, God, for God forbid. I'm seeing suits like me, I'll go and sow. And you see somebody stand with a plate outside and he's begging you and you go and throw 20 naira. You'll be rewarded because you did charity. But that wealthy place, you will not enter it. No way. It's not done that way. Are you listening to me? During miracle service, you are standing. Some of you are frowning and just looking. These people say, why are they always joking? Call my case. Instead of you to come and be praying and say, Lord, part of my prayer request, there is grace. There is grace to receive. You can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing. Go and see what koinonia messages are doing in Futmina. Go and see the kind, the rip, the miracles and the revival that is happening in Futmina. I, I, I wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories. I tell you, people catching fire. But there are some of you who are sitting down here. You hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh where i wonder where you think your miracle is coming from when paul was going to damascus and he fell the bible says god commanded ananias in other words he recognized he was a carrier of that glory and ananias said brother paul god sent me that i should lay my hands on you that your eyes be open and that you receive the baptism of the holy ghost and paul said yes I've seen it in a vision and he laid hands on him. Many of you come in every week. You see prosperity. You see excellence. You feel God is calling you into ministry. Every time you see every man of God, you come and talk and look and say, Ah, Jakes, I saw you that day at the faculty. And suddenly the door is closed. You will secretly get his tape and listen to and you find out that the door is not opening. You can't find that key. Are you learning something tonight? Graduates, forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie. If I were you, and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12, right here. As soon as you finish, go and find somebody that is working. Polish his shoe. While you are polishing, Kaboka Patakalia, Reto Sobrende Kepariyataba. God is calling you into ministry. You prepare or God told you you will marry a minister. Go and find a pa pastor. William's wife is coming here every week. Every week you are seeing her. After you finish, you say, ah, give me five. You just shake her. And the door closes and you shake empty hands. And somebody can come and say, Lord, if I may but touch the helm of his garment. That's how many of you keep sitting here. People come from other states. Less than 30 minutes, they have caught fire and caught an anointing. Are you getting blessed? I'm not saying you should give me money. I'm blessed. You know that. And without controversy, the lesser 
is blessed of the greater every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing say kai that means i'm a big man you are not wise you should turn quickly and start finding a way there is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. I can't be a failure in life. No way. Not when there is one career of an anointing. Hallelujah. When Pastor Biodun was going to bring Dr. Miles Munro, do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The, Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? One month before he came, they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs. Say after me, honor. As soon as he was entering his hotel room, a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote. He announced it on air that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world. No ministry has honored him like this. The honorarium that they were supposed to give him, they doubled it times three and sowed it into his life. There are people who have been in Abuja since 1991. 1991, they don't have their building. When he came into Abuja, he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him. Many of you are there on campus. God called me into ministry. You are foolishly doing things. There are people who have run this race before you. You can't come and greet them. You see them, you just push them. I touch somebody and they fell down. It will tire you. See, now it's not, it's not like before that they tell somebody, no, no, you see, stay back and let go, go, go and do ministry. Hallelujah. While on campus, we were all already in ministry. I tell you, we we're men of God, but I served in FCS till I finished. I was the press secretary engineering students fellowship. We we're already in ministry doing great things. Jakes was the president of NACA. Ejimi was QT, QT, uh, uh, he was in QT. Hallelujah. Manasseh was in faculty of arts. He was press secretary. Bishop became the press secretary after me, right? And then he became the president of engineering students fellowship. Are you listening to me? We were ministry, but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us. From there, I became the national prayer secretary of Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students. Then we all were serving. Jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again. Later became our leaders in FCS and we still told them yes sir. We will go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes sir to them. But we are still saying yes sir because it was about office not person. Are you listening to me? So why will you be surprised today that he and I will never lack people who are serving? Are you listening to me? It's a law and it's a principle. After tonight's meeting, we're going to pray two prayer points. The first prayer point is you are going to ask God and say, Lord, I have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them. From today, open my eyes to practice the law of honor. I need to begin to work in uncommon results. There are careers. Rise up on your feet. Somebody's life is changing. I tell you. Somebody's life is changing. This is one of the most powerful message you would have heard in 2012. And without controversy, the lesser I've given you a key tonight. I tell you, it will unlock any door. I don't care what that door is. It will unlock every door. Doors of jobs. Doors of ministry. Doors of business. Doors of power. Say, Lord, I repent from dishonoring the careers. It may be your mother. It may be your father. It may be somebody by the roadside. It may be an elderly woman somewhere. An elderly man somewhere. It may be your head of department. 
It may be people around. Look beyond the man. See an anointing that can take you to a new level. And without controversy, the lesser is empowered, enriched, blessed, lifted, glorified, honored by the greater. Bakabaria kapatabara, mambata kataya, mapariya taya. Let this key open a door for you. Doors of greatness, doors of new anointings, doors of increase, doors of business, doors of marriage, doors of family, doors of jobs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray. And you are going to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, I honor every career of the anointing that I need in my life. You may not meet some of them for the rest of your life, but you can honor them and it can be recorded in the spirit. It may be your mother. It may be a woman that gave birth to a good or a woman that has a good husband. You are looking for a good husband. You want a new car. You want a new job. You want promotion. You don't get it by dishonor. Some vessels are unto honor. Some vessels are unto dishonor. If you can recognize this, you are a wise man. You are a wise woman. We are rounding up. Come on, pray. Bataka posatai. Lord, I serve with my seed. I serve with my time. I serve with good report. In the name of Jesus. I recognize anointings. I respect anointings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. When you look at a man, you may not know when you see a man who is anointed, find out the encounters that brought that man to that level. Are you listening to me? Find out what level of grace Someone may come up the podium or he may preach on TV. He may not have the utterance you are looking for. Find out what brought him on TV that you have not yet gone. Somebody may come up here and may be preaching in Hausa and you are having to, they are having to interpret and you laugh and say, hey, this guy cannot preach. You are there seated at the back. The person is there in front. There must be something he carried. I tell you, if you don't recognize this, see let me tell you honor is not something you say uh, I did it in my heart lie lie is a law somebody will do it for you too so you have to honor any man not just a pastor whoever carries what you don't carry respect the sacrifice that brought it and you will see that you are stepping into it listen let me give you a secret for those of you who are preachers Every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing, recognize the grace of God upon that man. The meeting has opened unto you. If you come with arrogance, if I come today and Manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and I refuse to recognize him, I promise you, you will struggle in that meeting. The heavens will close. I don't care what kind of anointing you carry. It's a loss. People don't know. No matter who you are, you won't change it. Many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted, careers of your anointing. When they speak, they spit on your face because of how they talk. That's none of your business. You are looking for something. God knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them. Hallelujah. I have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house. I have not seen in the lives of many people yet. 
and i know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it i'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor my greatest my greatest desire is not to be a superstar joshua selman standing i tell you my greatest desire is that every one of you there are many anointings that are for the taking many of you don't know how to receive and let me tell you something the careers of your anointing are not always within your reach every day the price is more every day the price is more a day will come it will cost you more than it's costing you right now i tell you the truth there are many people for instance with all humility i when i used to have a lot of time you remember those times we we'll sit down sometimes some of the ministers were around but right now we don't have that luxury every day it keeps moving further if you don't see it a time will come elijah will move you are looking you will not see the chariot someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle hallelujah very soon many generals of god are leaving zaria many of you are the ones who will carry the next fire of revival in your arrogance and pompousness you will never look and say there are anointings what did these people carry that made them shake the campus what did these people carry in the midst of persecution in the midst of pain and say lord would you cause that there be a rain on my life what keys open the door of prosperity what keys open the door of influence many of you don't know what is bringing people inside and outside you are busy castigating and say eh, crowd does not matter instead of you to say lord there is a key once upon a time these people were not there what brought them the train is moving and for those who can see you can catch something and ride on it without controversy the lesser I tell you a secret of commanding results you will command results God put results on earth to be reproduced not to be stood with one man he who has an ear tonight let him hear hallelujah dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development Lord, grant me the discipline 